Uh, Eli, thanks for being with me. Welcome. Um, tell me a little bit about what you're doing with Quaker. Uh, I know you, they're trying to tackle hunger, which is such an important issue. Uh, tell me a little bit about this. Yeah, exactly. Um, really, really excited to, to partner with Quaker. One, I'm a huge oatmeal fan. And so, I've, you know, basically the last 15 years have had it for breakfast, including this morning, but also, um, you know, like me, Quaker believes that the circumstances of life should never be a barrier to good nutrition. And with the hunger problem, uh, going on in America, just being a part of their commitment to help advance food security in the U.S. And, and, and with that, they are introducing the Quaker Hunger Clock um, in partnership with Feeding America. And they're going to raise uh, $500,000, which is equivalent to funding 5 million meals. And they want to do that by Super Bowl 57. So there's an actual clock there in Arizona that's counting down the minutes until the game. And then also counting up the number of uh, of meals uh, that have been raised uh, through donations. And so you can also go to QuakerHungerClock.com, uh, learn more information and also uh, how, how to donate. It's a wonderful initiative. And there's, for those who haven't seen it in the commercial, there's an adorable little girl um, who at the end says, are you even a Manning? Is your name even Eli Manning? It's, it's really sweet. And and feeding kids is such an important part of, of everything that Quaker does. And it's wonderful that you're a part of that. Um, I know that you are a Manning. You're also uh, have an alter ego, Chad Powers. And I think everybody wants to know, are we gonna learn more about this guy's life story? Do we have any additional Chad Powers content on the way? No, no additional uh, content, uh, you know, right now. So we'll we'll see what might what might come of, of Chad and and the and the story uh, that that is uh, you know kind of been made up. I don't know if they can keep up with all the lies that I've told about uh, about him uh, and, and and how he grew up and and whatnot. But you know, it was it was a great uh, it was a lot of fun. It was one of my you know. Uh, you know, shows I was really looking forward to doing just to go and compete and, and be around kids and throw the football and and create you know create stories without really having a you know too much of a script and so uh had a lot of fun that day and and uh been been a little bit shocked of how uh of how uh um, you know how people have responded to seeing and, and learning about Chad. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, the episode was so entertaining and Omaha Productions, by all accounts, is just doing phenomenally well. But were, were you even taken a little aback by just how fast that caught on? I mean, everybody seems to be obsessed with this character that you created. Well, yeah, it's uh, it, it's interesting just walking through airports or walking through town. Every time I get called Chad now and, uh, <laughs> you know, more more high fives and like fist pumps than, than I used to get. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's been, it's been fun. And uh, again, it was, it was one of those shows. I knew it would be funny and it was going to come across well. And they, you know, when they sent me kind of the, uh, the initial look at it, I, I, I probably sent that one to more people than I'd ever sent any of the other episodes to just because of old teammates and uh, you know, people that I thought would think it's funny to have one more last try out and and uh the, to what was going on and how i looked and everything so uh, i was excited about it, but i didn't know it would get you know this much attention how much have you enjoyed the opportunity that you've had with the free time that you've had in retirement to to embrace these opportunities that are tied to football also to get back in the many ways that you're giving back including this partnership with quaker i mean it seems like from the outside you're just having a really good time it is. It's fun to to, uh, to stay busy, but also to you know be doing product projects that um, excite me and that I'm passionate about. Whether it's college football or whether it's doing stuff with the Giants or you know doing Monday Night Football with uh, with my brother or all you know things that I enjoy. It's loose. It's it's more fun. It's more kind of you know you can let your your your, your personality come out and, and just be yourself. But also, like you said, you know having time to work on different initiatives and different charities and, and organizations that, uh, you know, I've been a part of and be able to support a little bit over the years, but now I can get more time to that and more dedication to that. And, and also have time to family and, and, you know, weekends with them and my kids and, and watching them play sports and their activities. So it's been, uh, it's been a lot of time management, but it's been, it's been fun doing all these uh, different projects. It seems like for some elite athletes, football can be tough to break up with. Have you had any regrets about stepping away from the game when you did, or are you fully kind of satisfied in this next chapter of your life? No, definitely. I knew, I knew it was time uh, to hang it up. And I think because of that, uh, it makes it, it made it easier for me to transition because I was okay watching 
football. I wasn't bitter. I wasn't mad at anybody. I wasn't, you know, watching a game thinking, hey, I should be out there playing. I, I knew it was time. I, I was thinking, you know, hey, I'm glad I'm not taking that hit. I'm glad I, f- I feel good on a Monday morning. And, and you know, I'm hey, if, if a team I'm rooting for loses now, I know it's not going to bother me for three days like it used to. And so I'm happy not to be uh, in their shoes anymore and, and, and get to, you know, do different initiatives and different projects and, and having fun, um, you know, doing, doing this new, new style of work. I know I have you for just a couple more minutes. So because you mentioned, you know, not missing taking those hits, I know a lot of people miss the Manning cast on this Monday night, this most recent Monday night. But what did you make of that roughing the passer call that Chris Jones picked up? Uh, I'm curious to hear from a quarterback's perspective. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm as a quarterback, uh, I'm all about protecting the quarterback, keeping those guys safe and upright. And, and I understand, you know, we, 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 you know, it had to change over, you know, 15 years, it's changed the bunch and they're doing a great job of, of you know, trying to keep all the players healthy. But um, yeah, I, I just, I, I, I think this, you know, the, this call, whether it's the, you know, kind of driving into the ground or, excessive hit um it's just i think it's hard to get it perfect you're gonna miss some and 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 the importance of keeping the quarterbacks healthy i think it's okay uh in that sense but if you want to be able to maybe review those calls because they are such important calls a sack and uh, you know a majority of cases is to eventually going to lead to a punt whether it's on first second or third down it's just too hard to overcome that negative play and so all of a sudden instead it's 15 yards and a first down you know it's just a game changing play it becomes almost like a turnover if you get called for that and so i think they got to make sure uh they just have you know the exact uh rules of what they're looking for so the refs can call it the right way and and evenly and you know uh, just make sure they get those calls right yeah and andy reed i mean obviously going nuts on the sideline said it gave their team a lot of juice and you're spot on about like a game-changing play have, have there been a lot of instances that you remember in your career where there was a critical call um and then the refs maybe realized that they got it wrong all of a sudden the crowd is more into it than they've ever been before and it's actually changed the dynamic and momentum and affected the end result you know, I can't I can't recall of a, a of a specific one, but you just understand that, you know, hey, I, I always appreciate the refs and what they're trying to do. The, the game is moving fast. They want to they want to make the right decisions. They want to make the right calls. And I think obviously, um, you know, went with the different the NFL has done a great job of of trying new things and trying to make sure they get the game called correctly, whether it's, you know, adding the instant replay, trying it with different ways with the catch or not catch with, you know, player safety. So I think they're trying to do everything uh, to make sure they're getting the calls right. They're keeping guys healthy and safe. And so uh, with all that, you're going to miss some, that's just part of sports. It's not just football. That's every, every sport. You might miss a call or uh, make the air on the side of safety. Um, I, I think, I think everybody's, you know, okay with that. And at least from the, you know, the player standpoint and coaches. How do you assess the job that Brian Dable's done with the Giants real quick? I mean, a lot of fans around here were really kind of excited going into this season. Yeah, I think he's, he's done a fabulous job and obviously they're four and one right now, but you just see them playing very confident football and, um, you know, playing their best football in the second half and in the fourth quarter. And that's what you want a team uh, to be able to do, to have that confidence, to rise up to the occasion, to play their best at the end of games. And obviously so many games, you know, come down to those final possessions um, and whether you're a win or lose is, is be able to make the plays in those critical moments. Right now, uh, the players are stepping up in those moments, and that's, that's great to see. Uh, I'll wrap it up here and just kind of ask you this to, to cap things off. I mean, we've seen you lean into your love of college football. Everybody is going crazy for the stuff that you're doing on Monday night, and you mentioned all the charitable initiatives that you're able to give back to. You know, what What else can we expect from you over the next couple of months and years? Are you going to continue to to lean into this next phase of just exploring projects that you want to explore and taking on charitable opportunities that you're interested in and passionate about? I think so. I mean, I feel like I'm in a good place right now and, and have enough initiatives going on and projects that are keeping me busy and, and keeping it entertaining. And so I you know, just hope to, to, to grow on that and to do that. But also, uh, I guess, always looking for, you know, projects that, that are truly, you know, you can be passionate about it. You can have fun doing and, and, you know, get a, get a message or tell a story that, 
uh, that, that you truly want to get out. And so, you know, I'm not, I don't have a master plan, don't have something I'm specifically looking for, but, um, you know, you just listen for options and opportunities and, and try to take the ones that, that, that make sense at that time. Can you call Chad and tell him to get in on this Quaker thing? Maybe do get some advertising going. We want, we need the yeah. hair back. We need the nose back. Yeah, Chad needs an NIL deal. So he needs to, you know, you got to make, you know, if he would have made the team, he could have got one, but he didn't, he didn't make the team. So it's, uh, he's in limbo right now. Eli, thanks very much for the time. Great stuff that you're doing to help feed families who really need it across the country. It's a wonderful initiative on behalf of Quaker. And thanks for joining us. All right. Thanks so much.